My name is Jimena Nieto. I work for the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development of Colombia as an advisor for the International Affairs Office. In uh, 99, I was part of the Colombian delegation in Cartagena, as well as in 2000 in Montreal, where the Cartagena Protocol was finally adopted. Later on, I was elected together with René Lefebvre from the Netherlands, co-chair of the negotiating process that led to the adoption in October 2010 in Japan of the Nagoya Kuala Lumpur Supplementary Protocol. This process uh, for the Grulag region was very difficult because in Latin America we have all ranges of positions. We have big growers and we also have parties that have uh, implemented uh, bans on imports of GMOs and that made us a very difficult uh, group um, in, in the sense of it was uh, almost impossible to reach consensus amongst us um, in the different issues related to the negotiation. Um, and in that sense, I think the, uh, the negotiating process as well as the treaty itself help to build um, capacity in those countries, raising awareness in Latin America. And uh, it also made countries absolutely cl uh, clear on the fact that we need to develop legislation to protect the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity. Uh, it made also it made us also aware of the different approaches uh, that exist in the region, and I think that in a way brought us together. The adoption of the Nagoya Kuala Lumpur Supplementary Protocol contributed in Colombia f uh, to two important processes. First, we are revising our legislation in order to identify whether there is a need to develop specific legislation for damage to conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity in relation with GMOs. The second one has to do with the development of baselines for at least two species, uh, which we are country of origin, that are cassava and rice. That exercise that is undertaken by the Institute uh, Research Institute Alexander von Humboldt comes as a result of the, of the adoption of the supplementary protocol and I wanted to highlight those two important parts. One key result for Colombia is uh, that uh, this process of the adoption, uh, of the negotiation and adoption of the Nagoya Kuala Lumpur Supplementary Protocol is that it, it brought together two different sectors, agriculture, uh, and health in one side, environment in the other. It gave us common ground um, because uh, since the adoption of the Cartagena Protocol, there has been some differences in approaches that made us, uh, made us even not to be able to talk to each other. But the, uh, the, the answer to the question, what happens if damage to conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity occurs by the transboundary movement of a GMO, I, the, that was a, a question that interested us both and helped us to come together um, uh, for, a common, for a common interest. So I will highlight those uh, results and activities as a very important contribution to this process uh, at the national level. Finally, I want uh, to invite all parties to the Biodiversity Convention and to the Cartagena Protocol to ratify the Nagoya Kuala Lumpur Supplementary Protocol. It was a very um, it, a carefully drafted legal instrument that uh, was able to gather the, um, the different positions to uh, bring us together as the international community for one common purpose. Um, the difference between this instrument and maybe other legal instruments is that it really reflects the results of the negotiations. There were years of discussions that were reflected accurately in the text and it was very satisfactory to find out that all parties involved were happy with the result, or at least they were all equally unhappy. And in that regard, I really want to, um, to, to see this instrument to come into force soon enough, and my invitation would be to, as I said before, to all parties to ratify. Thank you.